so our butter is still a little cold, so we're going to utilize the fact that our cans should be a little warmer. We're going to take the brown sugar and the butter first, and we're going to use our hands to warm up the butter a little bit, okay, because I know it's a little chill. So basically, you are doing creaming method by hand. So warming up, making sure there's no lumps. All right, once when it feels kind of soft, you can just dump in the almond flour and the uh, all-purpose flour. I did up the butter on the recipe a little bit because um, the butter is what makes it stick together. So I went up seven grams um, just so that you don't have a problem with it falling apart while you're rolling it out. So you're going to knead this in your hands until it sticks together. And making sure you're warming it up, okay? Because that warmth is going to gonna, is going to make it stick. So everything you guys do today, you're going to do on your own for a final when we come back from uh, Veterans Week, okay? You guys are off that week. Your binders will be due that week when you come back. So um, I put it on Blackboard. Everything that should be in your binder, basically all your syllabus and all your recipes. So utilize that week that you're off to get your binder in order. And recipes should be printed. They should not be hand printed, okay? The college is still open and there is printing available upstairs on the third floor and it's free so make printings are free with your search part. So, all right, so what I did is I crumbled this out to make it go kind of flat. And then I, I just, just a half piece of parchment, fold it over, or full piece of parchment, fold it over. I find it easier if I have the parchment hanging off the edge, because then I can kind of fold it a little bit. And then use your rolling pin, and we want this to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So it should be very thin and very even, okay? So start rolling it out, pull off the parchment, put the parchment back on, flip it over, and see all my wrinkles? I'm going to pull, pull this back. Flatten it out. and then roll it again. We don't want any wrinkles. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to cut circles out of these, and we're going to put them on top of some of our pat of shoe okay? Eclairs and cream puffs are becoming quite the trend um, and more finer uh, pastry items in the big shop, okay? Um, they're filling them with different things. They're putting different glazes on them. They're not, they're not putting tops on them. They're using these types of tops. They're just doing sort of pieces of chocolate. So there's just a lot of different things that they're now doing with eclairs and cream puffs, and this is one of them. Um, so, but I need to teach you guys the basics before I show you all the girls and whistles. So bells and whistles. All right. So when you get this made, you need to go flat sheet pan. Make sure your name's on it. And we need to chill this while we work on our pat of shoe, okay? And then next, we're going to go into the pat of shoe. All right, you are going to use your largest pot. I chose that pot on purpose, so please use it. Your butter, your milk, and your heavy cream, your sugar, and your salt. So milk, cream. Sugar, salt, and 
and butter. Make sure to keep garbage off of your station. So we got a lot of disposables, so dispose of them. So we're gonna bring the milk to, and cream to a boil. You're gonna set your timer for two minutes. So what we're gonna do is, um, so pat a shoe is cooked twice, okay? So it's cooked once on the stove and then baked in the oven, okay? I know what's cooking, what's baking, but basically same thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this to a boil and make sure all of our butter is melted. As soon as that's melted, we're gonna take a piece of parchment and sift our flowers, both of our flowers, onto a piece of parchment. And as soon as that comes to boil, we're going to add all of our flour at once. So you want to stir this while the butter is melting because you don't want the milk and the fat from the milk to um, produce a skim and or skin and have it boil over. All right, so a boil means it's actually rising, all right? So if you want to be ready, as soon as it starts rising, we're going to add all of our flour at once. So we have your flour in a chute ready to go. So I'm seeing some little bubbles in there. All right, so now it's starting to rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my flour all at once and stir. And while I'm stirring, I'm going to turn this down. So I got it on six right now. And turn it up to nine. And I'm gonna start my timer for two minutes, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this until we have a nice thick skin on the bottom. And what we're looking for is we're cooking the proteins and we're evaporating some of that moisture, okay? So, Eclairs rise because of the moisture, and you guys just had this on your exam, you have steam, which is one of the strongest leaveners, right? So we need moisture, moist, moisture in our eclairs so that we'll get that steam. I'm going to lower this to like seven because I don't want it to burn on the bottom. So for you guys next door, it'll be a third. Okay, a third of the heat. Okay, um, so we can have moisture from water, which has no flavor, or we can have moisture from eggs, which gives us a flavor and our other structure builders, right? That we talked about in theory class on your exam. So um, we're gonna when we're gonna get rid of the water moisture here, so that we can add the egg moisture in the mix bowl. Okay. Also, cooking that starch in our flours. So this is temperature seven, and we're cooking it for two minutes. So timer's on, make sure you watch the clock, don't guesstimate. We're next door, a third of the heat. So it says 180 Fahrenheit. You guys have numbers, right? Don't you have temperature numbers on your thing? So 180. All right, so that's two minutes. So I can turn it off. I'm going to go into my mixing bowl. You should see a really thick skin on there, okay? You will need to use the stainless steel scrubbing to get that off. And some water. So you might want to put a little bit of water and then put it in your bus tub. Do not leave it at the sink. Okay? So you can put some water in there and then leave it at your bus tub so that it starts to um, soften up a little bit for you. All right, so pad a shoe, dough, paddle attachment. 
We're going to mix this on low. So we're just looking for it to cool down, okay? Um, what we're looking for is we'll be able to put our hand right now. If I keep my hand on there, I feel like it's going to burn. I want it to still be warm, but I want to um, be able to keep my hand there for a little while, okay? So that's going to take a little bit, and we're only getting the speed so that we can get the air moving. We're not trying to add air. While that's mixing, make sure your eggs are scrambled so that they will incorporate easier into the dough. We will not be using all of these eggs, okay? So we want to make sure that what we do use, we have a proper proportion of egg yolk and egg white, but also mainly because it makes it absorb easier. We're going to move this up to two. We're going to have three pastry bags. One is going to have a tip in it. We'll set that aside. All right. So pay attention to how this changes. Okay, because this is very important to know when to stop adding eggs. Right. Okay, so I'm going to add about an egg at a time. And I'm going to slowly let it mix in. As soon as it's absorbed, I'm going to add more. At first, you can go kind of quick because it's really dry, so it should absorb the eggs rather quickly. Do not wait. Just keep adding. When you start to get low on your eggs is when you're going to go slower, okay? So right now it's dry, it's dull, and it breaks up, okay? What we're going to be looking for is for it to look, for it to look moist, it's going to be shiny, and it's going to be stringy because of so much moisture in there. So I'll show you what that looks like when it starts happening. But when the paddle goes around, instead of it being kind of crumbly, it's going to kind of like, part of it's going to hang on the bowl, and then part of it's going to move with the paddle. So it's going to start to look stringy. So those are the three things we need to check. If the dough is too dry, you won't have enough moisture in there for the rise. Okay? If it's too wet when you pipe it, it's going to lose its shape. So, huh? As soon as the eggs absorbed, add another one. Shiny, moist, and stringy. And I'm only on speed two, okay? I don't want to be too fast. All right, so see how much egg I got left? Oh, that was lovely. See how much egg I got left? So maybe about three eggs worth. I'm going to need to make sure I'm careful now, okay? So you see how it's starting to look stringy? It's starting to drag and leave some behind it. It's not just clumpy. You see the difference? Okay. So that's your first sign that you're going to see. This is stringy. It's actually might be almost there because it's starting to look moist. All right, and then when you turn it off, you see right around the paddle, it looks nice and shiny, okay? So those are three things we're looking for. Um, so when we take this off, you going to scrape down the sides to make sure that the dry dough comes off it. You, can you see the difference in the texture where it's dry versus moist? Kind of. Make everybody see. Everybody see? See how it's kind of clumpy? So you got to make sure you take this off and scrape all the way to the bottom. All right, and then once you do that, the last thing I like to do is I like to take my finger and to your big knuckle, okay? Not the little one, the big one. So this knuckle here, this So all the way down here, dip your finger into it. And what you should see 
is that it should slowly close. Okay, if it goes fast, you've added too much egg. If it just hangs open, you don't have enough. All right, so it's slowly closing, which is exactly what we want to see. So what I want to do now is I don't want to add any more egg, but I want to mix it just a little bit longer to get it smooth because of all that stuff I just stirred up, okay? So I'm just going to put it on two, mix it for a couple minutes just to get that stuff that I stirred off of the sides. Not trying to add air, okay? All right, so turn it off, remove it. So scraping down the sides again. Okay, so it's also important how much you dip. If you just do to the short knuckle, then that's not enough, okay? So go to the big knuckle and drag so it's a nice deep well and see it slowly closes, all right? Okay, when you're done with that, you're not gonna to wanna to wear gloves for this next part because they'll get slippery. You're gonna put half of your dough in each of those two empty bags. Make sure you give yourself a nice big collar on the bags so that you don't get dough on the outside. If you get this dough on the outside, it becomes incredibly slippery, slippy. All right, you're going to start with the cream puffs, okay? You also have to make sure that your um, sheet pans are very flat. Almost everybody get a tip? Okay. So this is why we do this bag method, is it makes our life easier with having so much dough. So you're going to use a bowl scraper to push this dough down, okay? You're gonna cut the opening so that it's bigger than this tip, okay? Just slightly bigger. So I'm gonna cut it to about here. We don't want it, the bag, to be coming out the tip, right? So make sure you cut this one big enough. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the pad of shoe bag in the bag with the tip. And then you're gonna squeeze with two tips or two bags, okay? All right, so you're gonna fill all these circles, all right? So what you're gonna do is I want circles, not ovals, okay? Very important. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this about a 75 degree angle from the, the parchment, all right? I'm at the bottom half of the circle. I'm going to squeeze until it fills the circle, and then I'm going to let go. And then I'm going to kind of push in and release the dough. So I have just a little tail. Okay? So you're going to bottom half of the circle, about a 75 degree angle. Squeeze until it fills it. If you get an oval, then your, your bag is too low. You need to rise it more. Okay? We don't want a Hershey's kiss, that's why we're not going straight up. It's about a 75 degree angle. Stop squeezing. Assess the size and the shape with your first few, and then once when you get there, you should be able to go a little faster, okay? When you're done, you're going to remove the, the stencil. And you should just have pot of shoe. All right? These do not add flavor to your cream puffs. All right. Set those aside. We're going to move on to the eclairs. And you are going to pipe these to be this long and that wide. Okay? So what you're going to do this time, you're going to keep the bag low because you want a nice long stick, all right? So you're going to go down, stop, and then push up. Stop. 
stop and then push up. Notice I'm starting away from me and working towards me. This way I don't ruin anything. Okay? You guys should be good enough at piping by now. After all your piping in your tomorrow class. All right, so this is why we do two bags. A couple reasons. One, it keeps us from getting air pockets. But two, it makes it really easy to switch when we get low. Take out the one bag and put in the other. Again, make sure you cut this tip big enough so that when you're piping, one, two, you don't see that bag come out. You probably will have a little bit of air from the one bag to the other, so go over your bowl. Oh, it's not. It didn't do it. See that nice. Okay. So continue. So you're going to do all of your dough. Notice they are all the same thickness all the way down. They're nice and straight. They're not jiggity jaggedy like that one. Okay. When you fill up the two pieces, you're simply going to move the paper down. And you know what, there's not going to be enough to do all of them, so do it so you can use the bigger lines, the more lines, okay? When you're done, take out the stencil. Again, they do not add flavor. All right, that leftover egg, whatever leftover egg you got, add the same amount of water. Make sure it's a clean water, okay? So in this room, it's a sink. And the other one is the one behind the um, speed wrap by the door. And then you're going to take the paper brush. So just a little bit of moisture. And we're just going to rub these to smooth. And then that little tail, you're going to tuck it down. So think of your dog when it did something that it's not supposed to do when you walked in the room. Tuck its tail down. I'm going to leave this one not looking good so you can see why, okay? If yours is kind of, like this one, it was kind of um, sticking out a little bit there. So you, this is the time that you can use the pastry brush to kind of help smooth it out a little bit. Look like what? Should we put some red dye at the ends? Spooky, spooky fingers. It is Saturday. All right, I'm gonna put these in the oven. So remember, you guys are doing a really good job with this whole COVID thing. So keep up the good work. Um, numbers are increasing. I don't know if you pay attention to the news at all. Um, so make sure that you guys are being very diligent about not coming in. If you think there's a possibility, there's somebody at my husband's work, she just didn't quite feel right one day and then the next day she was COVID. So um, just be very careful. I know it's also cold, flu, and my allergies are going crazy. So just be smart. And that's why, you know, we're making sure we're wearing gloves and stuff so that if somebody does come down with it, then we don't share. So a little bit of egg wash on these. Yeah, try to make it smooth. And don't go crazy. All right, and then you're going to take that Release the parchment from both sides. Okay, very important releasing from both sides. 
So take it up, flip it over, release it from this side. I'm going to pull out the right size cutter for you guys so you don't have to worry about it. So we're only going to put this on half of them, all right? So we need, just do nine, or you can do ten. So one, you're just going to put that cookie right on top. So the reason we release from both sides is because this way when we cut, it releases easily. They are still a little crumbly, even though I increased the butter, but they're not as crumbly as they were in the past. So I still want to be careful with them. So egg wash all of them, put cookies on half of them. Um, when we're done, this is what you're going to give me for grading, okay? So this is what we're working towards. Um, get these baked. They take a while to bake. So mise en place, okay? So have everything ready. So you're going to want a bowl of ice. So if you need extra big bowls, I have extra stuff at my station. You are always welcome to steal from it. Just make sure at the end of the day, you have the proper number of tools at your station, not extra, okay? So bowl of ice, an extra clean bowl with a strainer, okay? You're gonna have a dirty bowl here um, and a whisk and a rubber spatula. So I got my milk, I got one sugar in here, and I'm gonna start to scald that, okay? Make sure you whisk the sugar in so it doesn't sit at the bottom and burn. Okay, now the other sugar and the cornstarch, we're gonna mix that together. Sorry, we're gonna put this in this bowl. And then we're gonna, I like to whisk them together, personal preference. I think the starch goes into the eggs a little bit easier if we whisk it with the sugar first. So remember our starches, we dilute it with something before we add it. Okay, especially our instant starch. All right, so after you whisk that together, add your whole eggs and your egg yolks. Whisk till smooth. It starts like to be a little lumpy. Make sure you whisk it till it's smooth, okay? Should it slightly change in color? So the proteins and the eggs are ready to absorb your hot liquid. Remember, keep your station clean and free of garbage. If you need to change out your sanitizing water, please do so. Everybody should be changing their sanitizer at least once, if not more, every day. Wet towel in a circle. And then your egg bowl on top of it. All right, so it's come to a boil. Turn it off. Grab the pot from underneath. This is a lot of liquid and it's a heavy pot. Okay, grab the pot from underneath. We are going to slowly add half of the hot milk and sugar into our egg mixture. Not all of it, only half. Okay, so whisk slowly, add a little bit. This is called tempering. So we're diluting ingredients that are more sensitive to heat and slowly warming it up. So only half of the milk. And then we're gonna go stir until it's all combined and then go back into the pot. The pot is turned off currently, okay? If I turn this on too high, it's going to scorch, all right? So I wanna make sure I don't go too fast. So I'm going to turn it on only like six and I'm going to stir it. I'm not stirring to add air. I'm stirring to make sure that my product does not burn. Okay. So make sure you get into all the corners and scraping the bottom and it won't take too long for it to come up to boil. So 170 guys for next door. 
All right, so see it's already getting thick. And then I want you to whisk it till it comes to boil and then cook it for about 30 more seconds just to make sure all of our starch is thickened up. So if you stop stirring, you can see the bubbles, okay? But we don't want to stop stirring because it'll scorch and then you can taste it. So probably the biggest problems that students may have is they're stirring, but they're not either they're not stirring the center or they're not stirring the sides. So you got to make sure you're covering the whole bottom of that pot while you're stirring, okay? So just for 30 seconds, bring it to boil. That way it'll be hot enough to kill any bacteria in our eggs. And it'll also help the corn starch to absorb, okay? All the moisture. All right, so what you're gonna do again, grab the pot from underneath. You're going to pour about half of it in because we're making a lot, okay? Press the patient cream through the strainer. This gets rid of our chalazes, any curled egg, if we have any cornstarch lumps. Press it all the way through. Now, I know you guys use this for your flour, so if you need to wash it real quick, that's fine, your strainer. All right, so get all the pastry cream pressed through, and then make sure you get all the pastry cream from the bottom of the strainer. You will need to make sure for both uh, pots, the pot for the patient cream, the pot for the kind of shoe, and this needs to be hit with that sprayer so that you can get the extra stuff out of it. For you guys next door, since there's only four of you, if you want to just go to the sink and run water through it, that'd be good. Okay. All right. Not the dish sink, but the other sink that's good for water. All right, so from here, what I want you to do is first you're going to put it in the butter because we need that to melt. And then we're going to stir that. All right, once the butter is melted, add the vanilla. And so Wayne likes to say milliliters a lot. It's the same thing as grams. We don't have anything that measures 15 milliliters because it's like doing ounces of fluid ounces. It's the same thing. All right, so once you have everything combined, what I want you to do is I want you to on your ice. Would you have a nice ice bath? I want to cool this down because we want to bring the temperature down quickly to below 40 degrees, okay? That's going to happen faster on ice because we have such a large amount is why we're doing it on ice. If I'm doing a smaller amount, I'll sometimes, I'll just put it in a shallow bowl and put it in the refrigerator, it's okay. But with a larger amount, cooling it down faster is better, okay? So on the ice, stir it, and then once when this is cool, then we'll take it off the ice bath, um, keep the ice, but we'll take it off the ice bath and we'll wrap it up and put it in the refrigerator. But it's gotta get cool first, okay? I pulled out my eclairs at different times so that I can show you what you're looking for, okay? So remember with steam, that's our main leavening agent and it's pressing our cell walls so that we get our rise and we should get 1,600 times the amount that we had, right? If we open up the door and we get cool air in there, what's gonna happen is the um, cool air is gonna hit the product and the steam is gonna leave the product and then it's gonna deflate and you can't get that steam back. Okay, so that's why I yell at you when you open the door. I have gone in and out of mine just so I can pull these out, but I went as quick as I could, okay? Um, so this is my first one. 
So what I want you to do is I'm going to show you what you're looking for. And then when you get close to the color, then you'll quickly take one out. All right. So this is a nice, pretty golden brown, which is often the color we're looking for, right? But if you look at the bottom, the product has shrunken up because it's it, the steam left and the proteins, our starches didn't gelatinize and our proteins didn't um, coagulate, right? So eggs, yeah. All right, so this is really soft and not what we want. This one's a little bit better. It shrunk up a little bit, but it's still really soft. So ideally when you bake eclairs, what you do is you have an oven <laughs> that you can turn down and let the shell kind of dry out. Our ovens don't let us do that. They like to heat up, but they don't like to cool down, okay? So this one is a nice color, still a little bit uh, blonde. Um, but it's still soft, but it's kind of stuck to its shape. This one got a little bit darker. I don't came up there where you guys can't see it, sorry. Um, this one got a little bit darker, but it still feels soft. It's holding its shape, which is good, but it's still soft. So this one, just a little bit darker. It feels firm, okay? So we're looking for it to hold its shape and for it to feel firm so that the shell's dried out a little bit. It's still gonna be soft on the inside, we can't help that. Ideally, you, it would be soft or dry on the inside, but we our ovens don't allow that. They would normally cook a hole in them so they get the steam out and the, the proteins will dry out. We can't do that. So what we're looking for is the nice darker color, and we're going to touch it to see if it feels firm. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking for. So I need you guys to evaluate these before you even come close to opening it, your door. Notice the color, okay? I did not spin mine around. I just reached in very quickly and grabbed one so you don't want to lose that steam. Okay? Any questions? All right, so when you go to check yours, pull one out quickly and then evaluate, shut the door again and then evaluate it. You don't leave the door open. You don't pull the tray out. You just pull, reach in, grab one, shut the door, evaluate, and see what you need to do. You got plenty to do that with. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna work on a couple of things at the same time, all right? So we're gonna have the heavy cream in the mixer with the whip attachment. So it's, I usually make you guys do this by hand, but I'm trying to get things a little bit quicker done. We're gonna put this on a seven and whip it. Um, while that's whipping, we're going to melt our chocolate, okay? The 125 grams unsweetened chocolate. Make sure there's no water in the bowl, okay? So if there's water in the bowl, then it's going to, their chocolate's going to seize. So if you notice there's some water, take out the chocolate, dry it, and then put it back in. We're going to bring the water to boil. Make sure it does not touch the bowl, okay? We only want, we only want the steam to touch the bowl, not the water, okay? So as soon as that comes to boil, I'm going to turn it off. And then at the same time, I'm going to be mixing this. You guys should have these tools out, a whisk, a large rubber spatula, a um, serrated knife, the, and you should have, I've got a new tip out for you and a large pastry bag and a thermometer. So while I'm doing this, because it's going to take a little bit, it's going to be loud. You guys want to make sure you have all of those tools. I just pull the thermometers out over there. Go ahead and grab them, okay? All right, so I'm done whipping my cream. So I'm wiping down my mixer and I'm gonna get it out of my way. We're done with it for the day, okay? So my chocolate, I brought to the water to boil. I turned it off and it's gonna take a little bit for this to melt, all right? So just gonna leave it there. The reason you don't want the water to come out. One, a bunch of steam will burn you. Two, the particles might fall back into the chocolate and then cause it to get a little too tight. So this way that's protected. All right, so the pastry cream, we're gonna finish it. So you, your whipped cream, you should be able to pick it up with the whisk, all right? If it starts to look curdled or like butter, then you need to start over. Has to be cold. Why does it have to be cold? Why does the cream have to be cold to whip up? I'll talk to you guys about this, right? Or am I confusing you with my other class? Is it firm, 
It has to be cold because the butter particles need to be able to hold the air. If the butter is not cold, then it won't hold the air. Okay? So very important always when you're whipping cream, cream should be cold, eggs should be warm. Okay? Opposites. All right. So um, make sure your patient cream is smooth. So take your whisk and make sure it's smooth. If it is, you can take the cream out. And this just lightens it up a little bit. And we're just going to use that same whisk and whisk it into the patient cream. And it's just going to lighten up the patient cream a little bit, make it a little bit more pleasant to eat in our layers and our cream. Right. So notice it's not completely whisked in. I'm going to take my rubber spatula and finish. Put the tip in there. Fold this. Don't overfill it. You don't want to put all of this in. Put only about half of it into the bag. You put too much in, it's going to be a pain to work with. This way you have more control over your bag. Okay? I'm sure Chef Stanton has talked to you guys about that. Right? Okay. Keep this on the table. We'll be using it shortly. Make sure you have a clean working space. So, um, before you do anything else, okay, I want you to give me one cream puff with nothing on it. Okay? Unbaked or baked, uncut, nothing done to it on your tray. You want to have a half sheet tray with a little cup with pastry cream in it. So what we're gonna do, make sure that when you cut the bag, that it goes past the times, right? So we're going to cut off the bag. And then first thing you're gonna do is put a little bit of pastry cream in here for me. I want it to be full, we got plenty of it. I wanna really be able to evaluate it, okay? If you don't put enough in, I can't, all right? Next thing. The cream puffs, the ones with the cookies, we're going to fill them, then we're done. All right? If you wanted to have fun with these, what you could uh, what you could do is you could put a little bit of jam at the bottom before filling them. We don't have time. We have to keep moving. I'm just giving you things so that you know how you could add flavor to them. Okay? We're going to put a nice big rosette on them. Of the pastry cream. It should hold its shape, all right? The pastry cream when it's cold. And you should be able to see some of the cream coming out, all right? Okay. The, uh, you need to do five that are plain with nothing on them. Just cut them in half. And then those ones you're going to do on this tray. And just like last week, we talked about the cream horns, having sifted powdered sugar versus not sifted, and how it looks much better with sifted, right? Because that's our presentation tray, so we're going to work off of this tray. And notice when I'm working with these, I'm leaving them together, and then I'm placing the caps right beside them. And then I'm going to fill it. Keep in mind the tops are hollow, so you need to have space to fill this, or enough cream to fill this tops. We're going to put these on top, and then we're just going to sift these five. Should be done off of the presentation tray. Should be done on the one that's not pretty. Okay? Once they're sifted, move them over. Okay. Next, set that aside. We're going to work on our eclairs. All right. So the eclairs, what I want you to do is I want you to cut them like a hot dog bun. Hot dog bun is still connected on one side, right? So this one, you see the difference between 
this one and this one. This is that one that I made. I left it not smooth. So I just kind of wanted you to see the difference. So I put that there. Um, cut about 10 of these. Okay, if we have time, then you can go back and finish them. But for now, I want to make sure we have enough for me to grade. All right. And what this is what, what I'm doing today is what you're going to present to me next week. Or, all right. So the players are different. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of pop it open. We're going to get our tip down in there. And these ones, we want to shut. But we want to make sure they're completely full. Okay. So. Hold, hold it at both ends, pop, kind of open it like a clamshell, and then close it back up. So cut about 10. You're only going to present to me six. You filled it too much. This one's filled a little too much. Just shut it, and what comes out, Always wear gloves. Whenever you're working with product that will no longer be baked, you should always be wearing gloves. This is not COVID. This is Board of Health. Okay? So just shut them and make sure that the edges look nice and clean. All right. So then we're going to set this aside, and now we got to get our fondant done. For our fondant. It's a very delicate balance of having the right temperature without going over. So we wanna make sure that we do not go over 100 degrees. So I always try to get you guys to think of 95 degrees. So if you go over a little bit, it's not gonna hurt your product, okay? So Wayne tells you not to go over 100. I don't know what the fond dip tells you. I think it actually tells you that product is um, I think they actually tell you you can go a little bit higher, but I like keeping it a little bit low. Chocolate, I took off of the heat when there was some little bumps in there still, okay? The carryover heat of the hot chocolate. And you guys should have written down how much fondant and how much unsweet chocolate, so you have those measurements. So it's 700 and 125. Okay, so all I did was I brought my water back to a boil and I turned it down to six and I put my fond dip on there. I used the same spatula from my chocolate, which is fine because we put chocolate in it anyway, right? So I warmed it up and I just constantly stirred it, okay? This thermometer is an instant read infrared thermometer and so it only does the surface temperature, all right? It doesn't do the internal. So you have to make sure that you keep moving it while you're taking temperature and wherever the red dot is, that's where it's checking the temperature. Okay. All right. So I got it. It was actually about 91 when I took that off and then now it's saying 98. So carry over heat, beautiful thing, which is why I want you guys, I'd rather you work with it at a lower temperature than to go too high. So what we have, the fondant is, um, what they do is they cook sugar. And then once when the sugar gets to a certain temperature, they pull it out and they start working with it to incorporate air and the sugar crystals get very fine and delicate. As long as you don't heat it up too much, those sugar crystals will stay fine and delicate. If you heat it up too much, then it's going to start to get gritty. You're going to break that nice bond that they have. Okay. So making sure it's always better to work a little bit lower than 100 then to go over. So 95 is a good number to kind of have. That way you don't go over. If it's, I'm going to visibly be able to see a difference because the ones that stay under 100 will be nice and shiny. The ones that go over will be cloudy. Okay, so I don't even have to taste it. It's going to be a visual thing. Okay. If you go over, we got plenty more. Throw it away, start over. Okay. All right. So I heated this up to about 95. Now I'm going to add my chocolate. Um, actually, it doesn't matter. If you drip a little chocolate in there, because we're going to be adding water anyway. Remember, chocolate is a dryer. Actually, you guys don't remember that because we did chocolate in a couple weeks. So chocolate is a dryer. So when we add the chocolate, this is unsweetened chocolate. So it has zero sugar to it. It is processed the cocoa bean from the tree, processed 
grind it up on sweet chocolate. Might have a little less heat than added to it. That's it. So, since chocolate is a dryer, this will probably get a little bit tighter once when we add it. Okay. See how it's getting to be more like that can frosting. All right, what we need, we actually needed it really close to the texture that it was at 95 degrees, okay? So it needs to be somewhat fluid. So probably about corn syrup texture, okay? So not uh, Mrs. Buttersworth pancake syrup, corn syrup. So a little bit thicker, should be moving slowly, maybe honey, okay? So what we're going to do first is we're going to bring this back up. Right now it's ooh, still 92 degrees. So I'm actually going to go ahead, make sure you have good clean water. So the only the sinks that are clean. You can always add more. You can't take it out. Okay, so I added about a teaspoon. I'm going to stir this in, see what it looks like. So as long as it's over 90, you can just add water until, and see what it looks like. Once it gets below 90, you're gonna to wanna to warm it up because as it warms up, it thins out. And we don't wanna keep adding water and have it be 70 degrees and then you warm it up and it's gonna be like Mrs. Butterworth. Which, you know, I like Mrs. Butterworth, it tastes yummy, but not the consistency. So remember, you can always add more, you can't take it out. And this is a delicate balance of temperature and moisture, okay? So it was 88, so I'm gonna warm it up, keeping my thermometer on, making sure I'm scraping the bowl, because what's on the bowl is what's gonna get warm. And keep in mind, if your thermometer hits the bowl, it's going to say a lot hotter than your product is, all right? So if you, like, it's at 108. So if you need to take it off, stir it, and then recheck the temperature. But it's only 90. If you don't want to mess with holding everything at once, just do a little bit at a time. So when I look at the bowl, I can see it's warmed up. So I take it off, I stir it, get it the same consistency, make sure I'm keeping my spatula clean, and then I check my temperature. So it's 94, it's still kind of thick. So Wayne tells you you can add water or simple syrup. Simple syrup is equal amounts of sugar and water. I figure there's enough sugar in the fondant, so I just add water. So this is a little time consuming, all right? And that's okay. And that's why I was pushing you guys, because I knew it was gonna be. All right, I'm starting to get the consistency I want. See how it's getting kind of flowy? Still a little thick, but I'm only at 92, so I'm gonna Warm it up. Don't ever just leave this on the heat and then go away from it or anything. Make sure you take it off the heat because it's, otherwise it's going to go over. All right, so I'm at 95 and it's kind of hanging tight. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water. All right, this should do it. It was at 93 and that's really close. All right, so see how fluid it is? See how much it's moving? Okay. All right. 
Once when it's there, what you're going to do is you're going to take your eclairs that you filled. So this is my cut side, okay? This is the uncut side. So I'm going to lead with my uncut side, okay? I'm going to dip and roll it so that it covers the top of my eclair. If there's too much hanging off the sides, you're wearing gloves because you're not going to be baking this anymore, you can always just kind of scrape it. And then put it back on the dirty sheet tray and see what they look like, okay? Make sure you're covering the whole top of your eclair. If you want to practice on one, practice on your ugliest one first and see what it looks like. Ah, don't do that. Okay, I can use that one again. Um, because it's going to take a little bit for you guys to get used to this, all right? And knowing what you're looking for, you got plenty of eclairs you can practice on. You only have to give me six to grade, okay? You're going to take a parchment bag, so it's a parchment triangle, and I got a little story that goes something like this. Um, you have a mountain. You're down here on one side of the mountain. You climb it, you turn around, and you look at the view, and you got a B, okay? Your buddy, he's on the other side of the mountain. He comes to see you. You're not there. He goes up the back side of the mountain. And he says, wow, look at that view. So you got a W there. And then you're both so excited, you jump up and down to make sure there's no hole at the bottom. The mountain doesn't move, only you and your buddy. And then you roll it down three times to keep the bag from opening up. All right, so with white chocolate, we need to make sure it doesn't overheat. Otherwise, it'll get really tight. So, I took it off before it was all melted. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chocolate, add it to my bag. Now, these bags work a little bit differently. Okay, You only fill them a third of the way up. And then instead of twisting the back side, you flatten it out, okay? And then you fold down the corners, kind of like puppy dog ears. Okay, then flop down puppy's ears, right? And then you roll it until the product is nice and tight, all right? And then you cut just a very small hole and I got a stencil for you guys to practice on. So you're going to do an S. And then you're going to do two little curls. Okay? You see that? So it's going to be an S. And then you take the six courteous ones and you move them onto your tray. Some of these have fondant that's going a little too crazy. You can just clean that off. So next what we're going to do is um, I just want to show you this so that you know what you're going to be doing. When we finish,
English hour eclairs. You're going to be doing a little pipe piping on it, white chocolate piping. I showed you guys it last week, right? But you get you didn't get to practice with it. So I want you to be able to practice with it today before you go. Um, so that's what they're going to look like. So you're going to use this white chocolate coating because it'll set up. The one that I showed last week was real chocolate, which has cocoa butter in it, which has to be tempered for it to set up properly. So we're going to use this coating. Um, you have to make sure your bowl is dry. We're going to do a double boiler. So I got water, but not enough to touch the bowl, but enough to create steam. I'm going to bring the water to boil, and then I'm going to turn it off with my bowl on top. That's going to give us enough heat, especially with white chocolate. If you have too much heat, it'll start to get really tight, especially this coating chocolate. So we're going to um, just do enough so that it'll melt. All right. You're going to be making parchment. So I got a little story that I'm going to share. All right, so you're going to hold it so it looks like a mountain. Okay, and everybody does this a little different, but this is what works for me. If you know how to do it, go ahead, but a lot of people don't. All right, so you're going to, you're you got a mountain. You're down here at the bottom of the mountain. You climb the mountain. And you go to the top, and then you pivot, you turn around, and you look at the view. And at the top, you should have a little V. Okay, see my little V? And it should start to look like a cone. Huh? So you have a little V, and it should start to look like a cone. All right? Then your buddy, he's over here on the other side. He comes over to see you. You're not there. He goes up the back side of the mountain. And he says, wow, because there's a W. Look at that view. See the W? All right. So look, see if you got a hole in the bottom. If you have a hole, which most people usually do, I do, you and your buddy are going to move up and down. The mountain stays still, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to move up and down. You are not going to go off the cliffs. You're not going to go wide. You're going to stay on top of the mountain to look at the view, and you're just going to look over some shrubs. So move up or down to look around the trees, okay? <laughs> All right, so you're going to do that until you see no hole at the bottom, okay? So once when you have no hole, if anybody saw Joe versus the volcano, Joe went to the volcano, his girlfriend went to the volcano, and they didn't show his luggage going to the volcano, but I'm sure it did because it saved them in the end. Not to give away the ending if you haven't seen it. But when you roll it down three times, the parchment bag will not stay. Okay. All right, so my white chocolate is almost melted. If you look at it, it's a little lumpy, but it's kind of melted. I'm going to go just a little bit longer. And before it's completely melted, I'm taking it off to the off to the water. So the chocolate's completely melted. So there was a few lumps. I took it off, and I just kept mixing it until it's smooth. You're only going to fill this bag about a third of the way up. Okay. So don't fill it up too much. And then this is the and. I'm leaving this not on the water because I don't want it to get too hot. If it gets too hot, it gets too tight. If it gets too 
hold while we're working with this, then we can add it back on, but we don't need to do that right now. All right. So these bags are a little bit different. If you think of a little puppy dog, these corners are his little floppy ears. Okay. Aww. Isn't that cute? Yeah. So your puppy dog ears. Is it here? Is that right set up for you guys now? No. That was worse. Okay. All right. So puppy dog ears. Pull this down first, and then this gets rolled. Okay. Those puppy dog ears keeps it from coming out the back side, and it gets rolled tight. Okay. And the reason why we go to no hold, because sometimes by the time we get product in there, we have a little bit of a hole. If we don't, then you're just going to take your scissors and cut it. Okay? But what can happen when you cut it is it squishes it down, and then when you pipe, it's kind of flat. So if you cut it, you want to kind of push the, the tip on two sides to kind of make it a square, but when it falls, it'll be round. That makes sense. So when you're piping your chocolate, if it looks flat, you need to um, crease it the other way so it looks like a square. All right, so this is just to help give you guys practice. So the parchment is just to help you. Um, and then the stencil is so that you can just kind of follow it. So you do the S first. And then you do the little sides. And it's acting a little funky when I'm doing it, so I'm going to go ahead and press it and do both directions, just like I told you to do. And I'm going to try it again. Make sure the chocolate is dropping. You're not drawing it on, you're piping it on, okay? So make sure it drops. And have it go around. Okay? So this is to help you practice your piping skills. Oops. If you go too fast, you're gonna um, it's gonna break. If you go too slow, you're gonna get wiggles. show you what wiggles look like. Okay? So, if I go too fast, it's going to break on me. I'm sorry. It's a habit. If you go too slow, then it gets wiggly on you. So, make sure that as the dough, it, or as the chocolate's coming out, you're moving. When you go on to your eclairs, you should be able to do them and they should look very consistent. Okay? They should all look the same. Um, hold on, Mike. My... See, there you go. That was excellent.